My name is Brian Kwong, also known as the Salesforce Wizard due to my choice of head apparel during Salesforce events. The previous episode provided an overview of the screen element. This series assumes you're familiar with the concepts reviewed in the previous videos. So if you haven't seen them, check out the playlist to get caught up. This episode is all about decisions. The decision element is how we create logic paths and flow. They're used for to set the pathways for our flow, to check to ensure input variables and data lookups have the needed values, and for ending flows early. Unlike screen elements, the decision elements work in both screen and auto launch flows. Decisions are similar to if this, then that statements. If something meets the criteria, then go down that pathway in the flow. The decision element is one of the more important items in flow because it's how you add logic and complex pathing within your automation. Almost every flow I've created has at least one decision element. So let's go ahead, make up our minds and take a look at the decision element. Before we can use decisions, we have to have some sort of pathway or logic for the decision to work on. In this example, I have a very simple screen with a radio button with two choices. Simply choose path one or path two. So if we go back to our canvas, you can see I already have a bunch of screens created. And what I want to be able to do is say, if the user chose path one, I want to go to the path one screen. If the user chose path two, I want to go to the path two screen. Pretty straightforward, right? So to do this, we're going to go ahead and drag the decision element onto our screen and we're going to give it a label and this is really for you this label is to give you the ability to look at the flow and determine what is actually happening here and i always like to put a description in this in case i come back many months from now and i go okay why do i need to do this particular decision so i will put something in here to say what was the intention behind this then we come with outcomes Every decision, every decision will have at least two outcomes, one that you have to define and one that's considered the default outcome. In this particular scenario, we only have new outcome, the one that we're defining, and the default outcome. And this gives us two branches by default. Essentially says, if I don't meet the first criteria that I define, I automatically go to the default. And that is a perfectly fine way to do this. The other way we can do this is we can have multiple outcomes here, and we'll take a look at that in a bit. But right now, since we're only dealing with going to screen one or screen two, we can keep things simple. So we're going to start by putting the label here for our outcome. And this is basically to give us uh, an indication on the line what the choice or what the decision was. So I'm going to go ahead and just say pathway one. And then I'm going to define what is the criteria to meet pathway one in the decision. So here I'm gonna go select and say, you know, I have this radio button called choose a path on my screen. And whenever they go ahead and they select path one, I want it to be pathway one. If we click on the default outcome, all we can do is change the label and that's okay too. Uh, I usually change the label to make it more clear on what the actual path is. So I'll just label this pathway two. Now, when I click done, we have our nice little diamond. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect our first screen to the diamond, and then I can drag a line. And I'm gonna drag a line first to path one, and it's gonna pop up and say, well, which outcome do you want this line to be valid for? So I'm just going to path one screen, so I'm gonna select pathway one. And now you can see pathway one shows up right smack in the middle of the line. So if you're looking at the flow, you can see, oh, Okay, once I get to this decision element, I'm only going to move to this line if I had chosen pathway one or whatever you labeled the actual outcome. If I drag a line to path two, it is not going to pop up and say, well, what do you want to select? Because there's only one choice at this point. It's the default outcome. That's pretty straightforward. And let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new version. Let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to use a feature called the debugger, uh, which will let us run the flow. And we're going to run with the latest version. And we can see, great, I have my path, pathway one, pathway two. If I select pathway one and I click next, 
I can say you chose path one. Let's hope you chose wisely. Okay, if I go back and choose path two, I get you chose path two. Let's hope you did not choose poorly. So that's a very, very simple way of using decisions. But what if it's more than just two options? What if we want to go and have three? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder this to be one, two, three, because I'm a little uh, crazy like that. And we need to add a new pathway or a new outcome to our decision. So I'm just going to call this pathway three. And I'm going to go and change uh, the, the section here to say choose your path equals pathway three. And now if I drag and drop, there's pathway three. So I now have one, two, and three. Now, of course, I also have to come back here and add this as a choice because otherwise no one will ever get to pathway three. And we'll save and let's take a look at what this does now. So I still get the exact same thing. When I choose path one, I'm going to see the results of path one. Same thing for path two. And now if I select path three, there we go. I've chose path three. Hurrah. Again, a very simple way to use this. Another way that I like to use uh, decisions is to end a flow early. You do not have to have a line coming out of the decision for every outcome that you have. For example, maybe if I chose path three, that's the end of the flow. I don't want to go further. And that's okay. Because what will happen then is if I go through and I meet the criteria for pathway three, the flow's over. I get a finish screen. I'm done. This is really helpful when you're dealing with auto launch flows. One of the things I like to use decisions for is to check my input variables to ensure that there's something in there. So these are something that I say that I'm going to assume that when the flow starts, it has passed some piece of information. This could be something as simple as the ID of the record that the flow was called from. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new decision and I'm going to call this check inputs. And I'm going to say that I'm checking the inputs that are starting the flow. And now I'm going to have my label. In this situation, I'm going to go and select my variable. And this could be anything that you have created in the system. But for me, it's just going to say, you know what? I'm going to check that it is null, is false. And I'll change my label there. So now if I come and I hit the start, I can go and connect this back and say, look, I'm only going to go to my screen with my choices when I'm on a flow that has passed in variables. So if I go run this again, this time I'm not going to specify the record ID whatsoever. And if I click run, I just get a message saying, hey, your flow's done. Congratulations. But I'm going to go back and change my input, and I'm just going to put something in here. It doesn't matter what it is for this particular case. Ideally, since I call it a record ID, it would be a record ID. All right. And now if I run it, now we get to our screen path. So this is really, really helpful to ensure that when your flows are running, they're running with the expected pieces of information at the very start of the flow. This way, if somehow the flow gets called and something doesn't get passed to it that you absolutely need further on in the flow, you don't end up with a really weird error. You could do something here that will make the flow end gracefully. You can keep it as it is now where it just simply ends. If uh, this was a screen flow that I was having users, I would actually probably have a screen specifically for an error message to say, hey, something went wrong you're missing the value for this. Please try calling your flow again or call your administrator. The other thing you can do if this is an auto launch flow is you can do some other type of actions. You can send an email to yourself to let you know that something went wrong, or you can create a record to let you know that something went wrong, kind of an error log path. Decisions are really, really important thing to get a grasp on within flow because Flow really shines when we have complicated logic within our automation. It's one of the only declarative tools that we have in our arsenal that can do the, this very complicated logic. Process Builder can do a little bit. Workflow can do a little bit. But 
hands down, Flow shines with complicated logic. The only other automation tool we have that can really handle this kind of complicated logic is Apex, and that requires writing code. And unless you're a developer, you probably don't want to go down that far. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to get a cool shirt like this, you can go to thewizardnews.com slash shop, and you'll find shirts like this as well as stickers, coffee mugs, notepads, and even pillows. You can also support us by shopping through our Amazon affiliate link, which you'll find in the description, as well as to thewizardnews.com under the support me menu. To get more videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon to get the notifications of all the future videos. Remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.